we go. There we go to session two. Okay, we looked at expanding the other day, and you basically got placements for tens, hundreds, thousands, and you kind of looked at decimals because when you expand, you wind up multiplying times a fraction, right? Mm -hmm. So let's make sure we understand exactly what fractions represent. And we'll look at transferring fractions or converting fractions to decimals and percents and so on and just try to explore the meaning of it. Because sometimes we memorize stuff and how to bounce it back and forth, but we don't realize the conceptual conceptual meaning of it. So um, let's go back to one we dealt with. We started off with point one. And as a fraction, you recall what that was? One tenth. One tenth, because it's in the tenths place, right? Good. So now, later on, let's say you wanted to turn a fraction into a decimal. What you're going to learn is you divide what we call the denominator. So at the top, we call it the numerator. At the bottom, we call it the denominator. Follow that so far. Now, normally, in order to turn any fraction into a decimal, you divide the denominator into the numerator. It's the bottom into the top. So I would say 10 into 1, right? 10 can't go on to 1 zero times. So what I did was I added a decimal and a zero, right? Put the decimal, 10 going to the 1 zero times, and I added the decimal. So 10 going to 10, how many times? One. One, good. One times 10 is 10. Subtract it, and we left with zero, right? So there you see how I convert a fraction back to a decimal. You follow so far? Mm -hmm. You divide the denominator at the bottom into the numerator. So now, for instance, and I'm just doing this here for future reference, if I had something like uh, two-fifths, right? I want to convert that into a decimal. What I do is divide my bottom denominator into the numerator. Five goes into two zero times. So I add a decimal, right? And I add a zero. Five goes into 20. How many times? Four. Four. Four times five is 20. Subtract zero. So in other words, later on, you're going to find out that two-fifths is equal to Point four. Follow that so far. So the first part we're looking at is changing <laughs> a fraction into a decimal. And I think you already know how to change a decimal into a fraction. But let's look at one more thing. And first of all, before I leave off this concept, let's make sure we understand what fractions represent. If I have the fraction one tenth, what it actually means is I have ten equal pieces, right? I have 10 equal pieces, right? One tenth of this here would just be one out of 10. You got me? So that's a very small part. You got me? So one tenth would be one out of 10 equal pieces. Normally you would see it drawn, let's say you had a pie. And it's broken up into four parts. And I have one part shaded in. One fourth. That's one fourth. So now, how about if I ask you the question, what fraction is not shaded in? Three fourths. Good. Three fourths. You follow? Mm -hmm. Three fourths is shaded. And one fourth is not shaded. So now, when we speak of fractions, you know the denominator represents how many parts you have, and the numerator tells you how many parts that you're dealing with. So if I'm dealing with 7 eighths, it's 7 out of the 8. You follow me? So I think you understand decimals, you understand fractions, then look at something else that you're going to deal with, something called percents. Percents. Percent. Percent is something broken up into a hundred parts. Remember at the denominator for these fractions, like this was something that they had ten parts, the two fifths was something that had five parts, the four 
was something that had four parts. Well, when we speak of percents, it's something broken up into 100 parts. So if I say 50%, 50%, and that's my percent symbol, that's the percent symbol. So you saw that symbol before? You saw that symbol before? No. Oh, you saw it before? All right. 50%. I'm going to deal with 50%. So that's really 50 out of 100. You got me? If I'm dealing with 70%, it refers to 70 out of 100, right? And if I'm dealing with 5%, five, 5 out of 100. Five and so far. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, ah. Since we know 50% is 50 over 100, 70% is 70 over 100, could you look at 50% and look at this information here and tell me how could I write 50% as a decimal? Point 50. Good. Pause right there. You remember that from the other day, right? Mm -hmm. Point 50. Good. 50, right? How could I write 70% as a decimal? Point 70. Good. Real good. So far. Mm -hmm. So now, you was able, first of all, you already know 50% is something broken up to 100 parts, right? 70% something broken up to 100 parts, right? But also, you remember from the other day, 50 over 100 was 0. 0.50, 70 over 100 is 0. 0.70, right? Mm -hmm. So look, one other thing. Let's say if I had 65%, right? Mm -hmm. If we don't see a decimal, it's always understood to be to the right, right? Always understood to be right there, right? Another way we can turn a percent into a decimal is just go two places to the left. One, two. So, 0.65. But that's a, that's a trick. That not you a trick, me? but I mean, it really. So, if I had 70%, like you just had, even though you told me it was 0.70, another trick, if I want to go straight from percents to decimals, just grab a decimal two places to the left. 0.70. You follow me? If I had. 29%, what that is as a decimal? 0. 0.29. 0. 0.29. You came over two places, right? Okay. Now I'm going to step it up a level. How about if I had page 2? No, no, go to page 2. I'm going to go back to back. How about if I had page 2? 3%. Starting with 3%. 0. 0.3. Uh, not quite. You remember how many places we say we go to the left? Two. Two places. What a decimal understood to be at if we don't see none? To the right, right? Mm -hmm. So what we would do is go over one, add a zero, two. So it would be point zero three. You follow me? Let's go with the same thing. Three percent. Do you remember what three percent is as a fraction? Point zero three. Ah, no, no, as a fraction. Three, three hundred. Three over what? Three over. Three over hundred. Because a percent is something broken up in hundred parts, right? Mm -hmm. So three percent has the same value as three over hundred, right? Mm -hmm. And notice, does all that look the same? So if I had five percent, if I asked to write it again as a decimal, I would come over one at zero two point zero five. You got me? All right, so we're dealing with decimals and percents, right? Our alphabets go from A to Z, right? You agree with that? Mm -hmm. And somewhere in between here, you're going to have a D and a P, right? So if I'm going from left to right, what you think going to come first, my P or my D? D. D. And then somewhere along here going to be my P, right? Mm -hmm. Right. So let's say it's been a long time since you dealt with decimal and percents. It might be a couple months. This here was something that helped me memorize it. If I'm going from A to Z, I know D come before P, right? So if I'm going from decimals to percents, so if I had the decimal like 0.75, if I'm going from decimals to percents, I go two places to the right. If I'm going from percents to decimals, two I go two places to the yeah. left. You following? Mm -hmm. You following? So now, I want to...
I want to turn this into a decimal. Which, how many places to the left I go? Two places to the left. And what would it be? Point zero two. Good. If I want to turn this to a decimal, what would this be? Two spaces to the left, point zero two seven. Good. If I turn this to a decimal, what place would it be? I mean, what would it would be? Point four seven. Good. Real good. And this is a decimal. Point two nine. Good. What's this as a percent? Point fifty four. As a percent. Fifty four hundred. Fifty four hundred. As a percent. You gave it to me as a fraction. Fifty-four over a hundred. Uh-uh. You giving it to me as a fraction. Remember when you say fifty-four over a hundred is this. I want it as a percent. So I want this symbol to the right of it. So if I'm going from decimal to percent, how many places to the right I go? Two. So if I bring this over two places, one, two. You five? Thirty-one percent. Good. Seven percent. Good. Two percent. Good. Any question on that? So, note from decimal to percent, you want two players to the right. Percent to decimals, two players to the left. Now, I don't want to put too much on you at one time, but let me just throw a, a, a big one on you. Here's a big one. You ready? So, don't let it throw you off and don't get discouraged. If I have the number seven. Seven, right? Where the decimal located on that at, you know? In the front of it. And the decimal, when you don't see none, it's understood to be right here, to the right of it, right? So, how about if I ask you to write the number 7 as a percent? As a percent, what you think it's going to be? 7 percent. No, think about it. Think about it. All right. How many places? If we go on, all right, it, it has a decimal on it, right? And to go from decimal to percent, how many places to the right we go? 2. So, what now? Add a 0, go over 1. Add a 0, go over 2. So seven would be seven hundred percent. You follow me? How about the number one? What a decimal look understood that if you don't see that? The hundred. Right here. So what will one be as a percent? Two places to wait for the percent. And you can go back and look at the notes. Which direction you're going in? How many places? Two spaces to the right. Good. One, two. So that's a hundred percent. Right? Mm -hmm. If I ask you to write the number twelve as a percent, what that is as a percent. Uh -huh. What a decimal? Is. No, decimal behind it. Right here. And how many places to the right we go? Two. One, two. So that's twelve hundred percent. Good. You follow? So the main thing I need you to get, and it's a lot of stuff at one time, is that when you're going from decimals to percents, you're going two places to the right. When you're going from percents to decimals, you're going two places to the left. Oh, that's you a good follow? catch. That circle that. You that's, follow? That's a big deal, right? You follow me? Now, here's something that we normally get confused on. Now, there's a lot that I gave you, so I'm going to pause. I'm just going with one more thing, and I'm going to pause just so you don't be confused. Look at this here. If I see this symbol, if I see three. this symbol, page three. it's a percent, right? So watch this. What if I had 3.5%, right? But I won't change it into a decimal. So it's a percent. If I want to go from percents to decimals. No, two spaces to the left. Good. Percents to decimals. I'm going to two places to the left, right? Mm -hmm. So watch this here. One, two, so it's point zero three five. Mm -hmm. Then I can drop the percent symbol. You got me? Mm -hmm. Once I move over the two places, then I can drop the percent symbol. So I want you to see that as long as you got this symbol, it's a percent. You follow me? Mm -hmm. um, so that means if I had 0.9%, I won't change it to a decimal. I will two go with two players to the left. So it's 0 0.009. You follow? And that's it for the day. We looked at percents, decimals, and we begin to look at uh, fractions. Now, this is what you're going to see. I need you to see the reason why I looked at it. Right. Do you remember what that was as a percent? Zero. Point one percent. No. It's a decimal right now, right? What I need to do to turn it to a percent? Go well, two spaces to the right. Good. So I'm going to go two places to the right. So point one is the same thing as. And once you move to two places, then you. Ten percent. Ten percent. You're good, right? Mm -hmm. You remember the diagram that I had?
And all these, imagine all these are the same exact size. Imagine all of them are the exact same size. Do you recall what this was? Point one was as a as a fraction. As a fraction. Mm -hmm. What place that one in? Two. Good. So it would be one tenth, right? All right. So you agree that one tenth is equal to point one, right? Yeah. And it's also equal to ten percent, right? Mm -hmm. My question to you is: Is are all three of these also equal to this here? Look at it carefully. Ten percent, a percent is something broken down into hundred parts, right? So would all these be equal, right? Yes. All right, so good. But they all broken down into two pieces. Yeah, there we good so far. Mm -hmm. Um, would you agree that I also could write this like this here? Because isn't that in the hundreds place? And then I had a zero in the hundreds place. So that's 10 over 100, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So now, I just needed you to see. You know one-tenth is one out of these 10, right? But you also know that 10% is one out of these 10. You got me? So now, if the one I have shaded is 10%, right? Everything, if I ask you everything, everything in the house would be what percent of the house? 100% of the house. Good. Pause right there. Everything in the house is 100% of the house, right? Mm -hmm. Everything in the house is 100% of the house, right? Mm -hmm. So all of these squares is 100% of the squares, right? Mm -hmm. So now, this is my last and final question. I'm going to leave you alone. If 10% is shaded, could you tell me what percent is not shaded? Not 90%. Good. That was, you wasn't supposed to get that. I was supposed to be a little hard, but that, it show you a good thing. 90% not shaded. 10% is shaded. And if I add up the ones that shaded with the ones that not shaded, I get 100%. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Mm -hmm. You follow me? So now, what's going to happen is, you understand that 10% is a small amount, right? Mm -hmm. If I tell you 50%, what that normally represent? About how much? Half of Good. Right. Pause right there. Half, right? Half. So if you go to the store, because these are the type of, you, when you get ready to really take your test, it's going to be in word form. So the next step, we start reading the problems. But let me give you a scenario that you're going to run into. If you go to the store and something costs $200, and you get 50% off. That's one to $50. If you get 50% off. All right? All right, check this out. The whole house, everything in the house is what percent again? 100%. All right. What is 50% compared to 100%? Half. Good. Pause right there. So if I tell you getting 50% off, I'm telling you getting how much off? You just told me. 50. 50 half. Now, you're getting half off, right? Mm -hmm. So now, think again. Something at the store costs $200, right? But I'm telling you, I'm going to knock 50% off. Half off. You're knocking half off, right? So how much you going to pay? $150. Listen again. Listen again. Hold on. Give him time to think, see? Give him time to think. Because he got the concept. He, he, he applying the 50 to it. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? So you told me 50% represent half, right? What you buying at the store costs $200, right? So how much will you pay? I'm giving you a 50%. You know what a discount is? A discount is the money you get off, right? Uh -huh. I'm giving you a 50% discount. What's 50% of, of, of 200 100. Good. Pause. 100, right? So I'm giving you 50% off. That's the same thing as me giving you $100 off, right? So if I get $100 off of the 200, how much I'm left to pay? $100. Pause right there. And that's what I want. You good? You follow that? Mm -hmm. So now, just because I was saying it was 50% off, that don't mean I'm getting $50 off. You got me? 50% represent a certain amount. Just like 10% represent a certain amount. Just like the 90% represent a certain amount. You follow me? Mm -hmm. For the next time, we're going to work strictly on word problems, but we're going to take time for you to just practice converting these back and forth, and then we can jump to the word problem. Because really, the standardized tests, they really deal with word problems, and the word problems would throw people off. Not taking time to read and understand. Tricky. Well, yeah, it's tricky. It's real tricky. But that's it. See, that was a lot for the day. That's beautiful. That was a day.